Hey yo, welcome to the QB School Live. We'll do it live. We'll post draft, take a deep breath, recap. Fired up for this one. Uh, I'm trying to do these kind of at random times. See if I can uh, maybe hit some people who normally don't get to come to the lives if I do them at a normal time in the evenings. Plus it just works out better for me sometimes that it's this time. And I don't necessarily want to do a video this Monday. So a live is a nice way to... Uh, Feel like getting the opportunity to interact, react from the draft, take a deep breath, think about how some of these picks and or non-picks uh, went down for a while, and talk it through with some of my uh, closest uh, buds here on a little live. So do me a favor, if you are walking into the live, uh, hit me with your favorite emoji, let me know that I sound all right. Uh, there will never be a better time than the start of a live to get your questions in. So if you have Questions, ideas for videos. This is that time for the channel where it can really go in any different direction. There's a bunch of X's and O's videos I want to do. Got maybe some special treats uh, lined up as far as maybe some vintage film. Don't want to kind of let the cat out of the bag, so to speak, until I get a chance to look at the film. But potentially get some opportunities to go back and look at a little bit older film. Don't get crazy. It's not going to be 8 millimeter. My man Brawley, appreciate checking in. Uh... But now is the time. So it's a fun time to be able to kind of uh, explore exactly uh, different topics, different things. Maybe some guys that potentially would get drafted next year, that kind of idea. Um, some scheme things that are on the horizon for football at the highest levels, those types of things. So fired up to see exactly how that thing shapes out. Appreciate you guys checking in here, coming in hot into the channel. <laughs> got a bunch of them. Oh, man, we got... Silvano, checking in from Switzerland. Love it. Love to see a little international quarterback school. John Connolly wants me to go. Wide receiver takes. Probably not going to happen. Sam Howell. We, we will absolutely get to Sam Howell short round uh, at some point. Probably try to go kind of down the list of guys who got drafted, or at least the guys that I uh, looked at and kind of got the opportunity to examine their film and just kind of talk about a combination of things as far as what that draft process was probably like for some of them. Uh, and then just kind of, I don't love the game of like fit, but just talk about landing spot because I think fit and luck play a big role, probably bigger than many, if not everyone would love to give it credit as far as what these guys and the career that these guys will have, at least at the start of it, uh, when it comes to whether what organization you go to, what your situation is, how quickly can you play, what is the scheme, how does the scheme fit your potential skill set, all of those things kind of wrapped up together into a big kind of uh, trash can of luck to uh, see where you end up. So excited. Oh, man, we got Nikola checking in from Serbia. Love it. <laughs> My goodness. appreciate you all hitting the like button here to get this thing started. We'll kind of uh, see here if there are any questions that kind of pique my interest before we dive into kind of the post-draft recap for the quarterbacks. There will probably be some, I don't know, I don't think necessarily unique takes, but just kind of walking through exactly what it feels like, maybe uh, the emotions of what that getting drafted or not getting drafted or seeing guys get drafted ahead of you, uh, what I remember about it, maybe and uh, the things that kind of stoke the fire that continue to burn for a lot of these guys who... You know, depending on how it works out, whether it's health, whether it's opportunity to play, uh, the longevity of their career, a lot of it is based on where they start. And so, fired up for it. My man, Coach Grays, love to see it. Appreciate you checking in. We will absolutely, Johnny Boy, talk about Sam Howell going in the fifth. Titans won the draft. There's a lot of people that think a lot of teams won the draft. Unfortunately, winning the draft usually doesn't mean much other than like a nice week of media. But uh, certainly excited to talk. So let's go through kind of as we get going here. And if I jump out of order, uh, make sure to correct me on the uh, on the thing here. Oh, here we go. Brawley. We'll get you a quick question. I see it. Nice, thoughtful question. I'm going to a new football team where the starting quarterback has been there since he was a young kid and I'm new to the team. Is there anything I can do to become the starter? Uh, sure, there are probably a number of things you could do to become the starter. It will be tougher uh, than maybe just kind of a 
an empty, clean slate opportunity. But if you're the better player, you know, unless his dad is the coach, uh, I think eventually you'll get an opportunity. And when your opportunity comes, you just play so well that you never come off the field. Doesn't mean it's going to be easy. Doesn't mean that, you know, I'm sure there will be some hurty feelings, but if you also have to be the better player and develop and do all the things that coaches are asking you to do. And you're certainly not uh, from a place of a head start because of the relationships that the player who's been there for a long time has. But I definitely don't think it's an overwhelming decision. I think most coaches uh, are interested in playing the best player. And, uh, you know, if you're the best player, you've got a great opportunity to play if you're in a fair situation. A lot of assumptions there. (laughs) Silvano, you're reading my mind about the uh, next X's and O's video. I uh, had a good couple suggestions come in from a channel OG and flood sale was on there. I need, just need to go back and see, make sure that I haven't done anything like that yet. I don't think I have. I think I did maybe scissors question mark. We'll see. The NLP podcast. What'd you think of the Panthers draft? <laughs> uh, I mean, we'll see. I, I don't know. Uh, I I, I, <laughs> I don't have anything really too nice to say about it. You know, we'll talk about Matt Corral uh, when I kind of get there over the course of the thing, over the course of trying to break down where all these guys went. But, you know, as far as Matt Corral and what that situation looks like, I don't think that situation looks very good for anybody to come in and play quarterback at the exact moment. All right, here we go. So I'll probably need some help in the middle of this thing. So I might refer to a list, but I'll just try to rattle this thing off just kind of from uh, exactly how it went down. We've already, I've already talked a little bit. And if you want more on the uh, Kenny Pickett Steelers thing, check out the, you know, the live post that first night of the draft. I will still say, I think it's a really cool story. I really do. Uh, I don't necessarily, well, before we even get into this, Let me put it from this frame or this lens. I think this quarterback was exactly, this quarterback class was exactly what most people thought it was. You know, not necessarily very good. That doesn't mean that it won't eventually become good because I think almost, if not every situation, every quarterback that's got the capacity to potentially start is in a developmental situation. What I mean by that is, they don't have to go out there and be the number one guy the first mini camp. In fact, they won't. Uh, there's not that there won't be opportunities to win jobs for guys, but really, besides for Kenny Pickett with the Steelers and the 20th pick or whatever it was, I don't think any of those guys will have immediate pressure to play that first year, if anytime soon. So to me, it reaffirms kind of what everyone thought, which was not a huge leap. But then I think the part that is most interesting about where everyone landed and the part that I'm most interested in, the story that I'm most interested in moving forward, is just the development. So I think all of these potential quarterbacks that got drafted uh, are in some pretty cool spots as far as what that looks like development-wise. Now, I think it certainly helps depending on what organization you went to and their track record for development. But, and, you know, it also depends on, hey, What's the stability of the staff, the ownership, the winning, the culture, all those kind of whatever coaching jargon terms. I think it does matter to a certain degree as far as what it looks like for the development of these quarterbacks. And we'll talk about each one of them individually. The other part about it is, can they, when will they play? Because you have to play on the rookie deal to take advantage. No, you don't have to, but you almost have to, to take advantage of that opportunity to avoid kind of what your original organization is. If you come in and you go Jordan Love on somebody and you don't play, you know, what is the impact of that? What does it look like? He's in this gray, you know, gray world where, you know, some people think he can play, some people think he can't. You know, he's not going to play anytime soon for the Packers. You know, what does that look like? And so maybe some guys fall into that void eventually. But I think development-wise, he is a great example of being in a great situation to develop. I think the rest of these guys are also potentially in better situations to develop than others. But the other thing, it's not just the development. You have to play. So what does that mean? That means, let's go down the order. Kenny Pickett, Trubisky, competing for it. All right. You know, even if he doesn't win the job, Pickett originally, right at the start of camp, you know, there's a good chance that he's going to play sometime really soon. You don't take someone in the first round 
and not have them play unless they're Jordan Love. So he's going to get his opportunity. He's in a great organization. It's a really cool story. We'll see. The next one for me, Desmond Ritter, Atlanta. Uh, Marcus Mariota. You know, is he a better player than Marcus Mariota? Was he a better player coming out of college at Mar- than Marcus Mariota? You know, I would probably say no. I don't think that's necessarily a stretch. doesn't mean that Marcus Mariota has played his best ball on Sundays yet. We'll see. Uh, I think it is a, an opportunity for him to learn behind a guy who probably does things the right way, who will be a nice uh, model for him to be able to kind of craft at least that first experience in the league about how to do the job, all those types of things. But is he better than him? Will he, you know, when he gets his opportunity, will he flash so much so that he'll never come off the field? Maybe, you know, I I don't think there's anything that jumps off the tape that says that for sure. He might eventually become more consistent uh, playing from within the pocket and doing all the types of things that he needs to do on Sundays to be that guy. But I don't think there's any evidence right now that that's the case. Okay, so the next one, who was the third one? Was it... uh... Malik Willis. So Malik Willis, Tennessee. Uh, Obviously, I've said enough about what I think about his potential, his ceiling, what he brings to the table. He's in a what I would consider a good spot for development. It doesn't mean that he necessarily is going to model his game after Tannehill, but I think that organization is in the right direction uh, as far as culture of winning, how they play old school, kind of mixed with the running game, with play action, that potentially fits what he could bring to that position. I think just from the Titans' perspective, you know, I think looking across the landscape of the league, that conference, you need a dude and a playmaker back there that can be the difference. And I don't think Tannehill has proven that he can. He can prove that he can be certainly do what they ask him to do and do it at a high level. And, you know, are they any closer to a Super Bowl with him? I think Malik Willis and what he potentially can develop into is a pretty exciting opportunity and kind of a space for Titans to be able to kind of develop that be able to play at a high level, still with Tannehill, but then also understand that, hey, as we develop this and if he ever gets an opportunity, he potentially could be so good that we can never take him off the field really quickly. And so that to me is certainly the most, one of the, if not the most interesting landing spot, just because of what that organization has been doing, what that organization probably looks across the landscape of that conference and sees at the quarterback position and realizes, damn, you know, that there's a, there's a separation, even though we're so, you know, run dominant and what we do and all those types of things, you know, will that always be the case? And then just how the quarterback position has evolved in that conference, you just seem to need that type of guy to get where they want to go. And so pretty exciting to see what happens with Malik Willis and the Titans. Next, Matt Corral, Panthers. So this is where I start going off the rails as far as knowing off the top of my head. Round three, pick 86, Matt Corral, Panthers. First, you know, he potentially, the, the good is that he's probably going to get a chance to play quickly, I would imagine. That's no knock on anybody else, whatever they do. Maybe they bring someone else in, whatever. It's not from the outside looking in a stable situation, first thing, as opposed to the Steelers or the Titans. You know, or or even really the Falcons right now doesn't mean necessarily long term. Certainly there, but I think Mackerel's got the of that chunk has got kind of of the uncertainty. He's got a great opportunity to play now. If he goes in there and plays and plays at a really high level and never comes off the field, that's a great spot. That's a lot, <laughs> that's a lot of damn ifs. So is that going to happen? You know, who am I to say it's not? But it's not necessarily the spot. If I could pick any of the spots to be like, hey, I would love to take the place of that guy or this guy or that guy in this organization, this would not be the one. Uh, so I think the you know the, the unsettling part of what that organization is, the coaching staff right now, the situation, what else is going on over there, how long they will be there, all those types of things, you know, do not necessarily sit well to the long-term development of Matt Corral, and it could end up being a quick turnaround the best spot because he could play really quickly and playing really quickly helps, you know, look at David Mills, a perfect example of someone who probably, you know, a while back, not a lot of people thought an organization, a franchise would be like, yep, we're going to ride with this cat right now. And you go out there, you play well, you play well enough for an organization to believe in you. And all of a sudden it's your spot for now. So those types of things I think matter when you're talking about where guys land. Uh, Next, Bailey Zappi, New England, 
Goddamn. Round four, what was the pick? 137. I mean, the Patriots draft. I, I think the dude, you know, the organization has certainly earned the right to do whatever the hell they want. Uh, I don't think I'm going on a limb and saying that it seems like they potentially may have reached on certain guys, but if they identified who they wanted, and they wanted to get him around earlier to confirm, you know, he's obviously proven, they've obviously proven that they know what the hell they're doing. You know, maybe not draft-wise necessarily, but who am I to say that that's not a great pick? You know, if I was Bailey Zappi, I'd be fired up. Uh, it's not the easiest organization probably to be around. It's probably, you know, who knows who the hell is calling plays over there, what the offense coordinator is, you know, whatever, whatever. But as far as just a track record and an organization that had, can certainly show you how to win and what the expectations are to win on Sundays and what it looks like, uh, pretty cool spot to land, especially in that fourth round where you're essentially on the team. You know, very rarely do I think fourth round guys get cut. So you're going to be asked to contribute, whether it be a backup, whether it be something, you are on the team, which matters. I, I think, it, let me tell you, it matters. <laughs> so, from that standpoint, now is it pushing Mac Jones? Hell no. I don't know. I saw a couple hot takes out there that that was some sort of referendum on Mac Jones. I don't think so at all. I think it's just a smart way to build cheap depth at the end of the day. Uh, next one, Sam Howell. So Sam Howell, round five, pick 144, Washington football team. Uh, to me, this is a similar to the Matt Corral situation in Carolina. I think, you know, would I say that you're going to necessarily, is it a great spot to develop with who they have there playing right now and whence? You know, I don't think that there's any evidence to say that. I think the best opportunity or thing about this landing spot is that round five, you're almost guaranteed, not guaranteed, but pretty damn guaranteed to be on the team unless you come out there and just, you know, can't grip a ball. You're probably going to be on the team. You're probably going to get a chance to develop. And there's a pretty good chance that the guy who's playing right now in Wentz is going to either get hurt, do something that Im impacts his ability to play, uh, not play well enough, and you're going to get an opportunity. And I think that's the most exciting thing for someone. Once you get like past round two, really round one, round two maybe, there's no guarantee you ever see the field. Well, let me say that again and let that sink in. You can be the top five of your position for a year there's no guarantee you ever take a meaningful snap ever take a meaningful snap so you have to get that opportunity to play and I think Matt Corral and Carolina Sam Howell and Washington are in situations where they might play quickly now that doesn't mean that they come in there and win the backup job or win the whatever I just think the way that it looks depth wise there with the track record and evidence of how those organizations have gone at that position you're gonna play and if you play well play so damn well that they never take you off the field, then you're in a great spot. That's kind of my hot take with where those two guys landed because, you know, I don't know. Uh, the other couple guys, the guy from South Dakota, I've never seen play. Steelers depth. Skylar Thompson, Thompson, uh, Kansas State, never saw play for the Dolphins. And then briefly here at the end, Brock Purdy, you know, Mr. Irrelevant, San Francisco. I really liked Brock Purdy, you know, probably before this year's film, for whatever reason, uh, I would say regressed. is You can probably loosely say that as far as just the on-field production evaluation standpoint of it. Doesn't mean that there aren't some bones in the infrastructure and kind of foundation to be a good player. I think that's an outstanding spot to develop. Now, what that quarterback room looks like exactly moving forward, who the hell knows? but you're not going to be in any kind of rush to ever play. Now, there's no great guarantee you're going to be on the team, first of all, as a seventh-round pick. But, you know, new quarterback coach, Brian Greasy, a lot of new staff turnover. You're going to get to go in and be, you know, part of a what I would consider a quarterback-friendly system. They're certainly going to be in the mode of developing with Trey Lance, and so you can kind of catch that kind of tailwind and hopefully when when and if you ever get an opportunity you play so well that you can either you know play yourself into a co bigger contract somewhere else or just continue to play well and so I think that's a pretty cool landing spot for him uh, I know I always get kind of mixed reactions for late round draft picks because if you I think it's better to be drafted I will say that but I think if you're a prized undrafted free agent you get a little bit more freedom where you land but if I were him just kind of off the top of my head I don't think there's a better spot to land when 
You want to be, if you're a developmental guy, you want to be in a developmental situation. And a guy like Trey Lance or a young quarterback who's going to come in there and play immediately, that's a developmental situation where if you can catch the tailwind, could yourself develop. And then when you get your opportunity, I sound like a broken record, you have to play so well that you either never come off the field or play so well that somewhere else wants to pay you. So that was a lot of me yapping. <laughs> Let's get back to the chat here, see if there's actually some thoughtful questions for y'all. If y'all totally think I'm off the rails, what you think otherwise, maybe some gaps or blind spots that I wasn't thinking about. Let me see. Let me know. Check in. My man Capea. Love it. Thanks for watching the processing video. Appreciate it. Appreciate all the continued kind of uh, Let me see what questions wise we got here. My man Simon. What about the O line in Tennessee? Greetings from something. Small C H. Uh you talking about the boys? <laughs> That's all I know. I only know the dude who does busting with the boys. Uh, my man, what's his name? Trevor. Taylor. Jeez, Trevor. Uh, I don't know anything about the Tennessee offensive line. Sorry. Besides the left tackle. What else we got here? <laughs> ben Huh. What team needs a starting quarterback would... Baker Mayfield have the most success in? I mean, I guess it depends on what you consider success. Are we talking about, you know, going to the playoffs? Are we talking about winning playoff games? Are we talking about winning the Super Bowl? You know, I don't think that there's any team necessarily right now that's looking for a starting quarterback that is on the road to the playoffs. I think the teams that jump to the top of my head as far as still landing spots for Baker Mayfield are Seattle, Carolina. You know, I don't think he'd ever end up in Pittsburgh. But if they cut him, you know, th those would be the two that jump to me. I'm sure that there are other ones that I'm not thinking about. I, th I think, you know, Houston will probably have some interest. I don't know. What else we got here? My man Peanut Brooks is all in on Kenny Pickett. All right. Oh, yeah, Capella, that's a, that's a good point. Let's talk Carson Strong. So, Carson Strong, undrafted. I don't even know where, where and if he signed. Uh, that's a decent example of, you know, the leverage potentially you would have as an undrafted guy to at least pick an opportunity to be in a developmental situation. You know, I'm probably as bummed as anybody about the car. Not, not obviously as him or his family, but Carson Strong, Something obviously is not correct with his leg. Now, hopefully, if that's something that can improve, but if it can't, you know, you, you feel terrible for the guy for coming back and playing like that or or whatever, you know, the details of it are, are tough to bear. But when it impacts a guy's future like that, it's tough because he certainly has the arm talent that he deserves an opportunity in the league. For sure. Philly, yeah, that's right. So, I mean, Philly's a good example. Of, of what I would consider a, well, I guess it's kind of a, a tweener example because I would say that they're in a developmental mindset with Jalen Hurts at the quarterback position. But, you know, if he comes out and doesn't play well enough this year, they're going to go in a different direction. And so you kind of, and, and this is, again, the part that I feel like I say this every damn video, but so much of this is luck where you end up, what your situation looks like, your health, uh, when you get an opportunity, if you get an opportunity to play. You know, if he were, let's just hypothetically play this out, Carson Strong. I couldn't tell you what the quarterback room is in Philadelphia behind Jalen Hurts. Let's just say he finds his way onto the roster. Let's say that they have a great year this year and are right on the, you know, in a, you know, right in it with that division at the end of the year playing meaningful games. He gets hurt or the starter gets hurt. Maybe the backup gets nicked up and now the third string guy's playing. It happens. Never happened when I was on the team. But you look across the landscape of the league, and eventually guys at the bottom of the roster uh, will find opportunities late in the year. And if he can, I think that's a, a really great opportunity for him you know, to be able to do that. Now, again, it's a lot of ifs, and it, it mostly stems from his own health. But as far as just being able to turn on the film and say, yes, that arm translates to Sundays, Carson Strong is absolutely that dude.
All right, what else we got here? Richard Cena, thoughts on the Lions committing to Goff for another year? Yeah, I mean, I would probably flip that question and say the Lions really decided that they weren't interested in investing in this class. You know, I, I don't think the Lions are investing. I don't. I don't think anything anybody thinks that the Lions are investing in Goff long term as the solution for that franchise at that position. Uh, I think they just kind of put this basically pa paused last year, passed on it last year, passed on this year's class, and next year they'll have to make a decision at the quarterback position. Justice Born 7. Any idea why Malik Willis fell so far in the draft? As a Steeler fan, I feel like Willis is a far better prospect than Pickett. Uh, well, let's see, what exactly did he fall? He was pick 86. Kenny Pickett was pick 20. Uh, I mean, I think the, the easy answers... And these aren't necessarily my answers, but the easier answers are Kenny Pickett is more polished, maybe more of a turnkey opportunity or an opportunity for him to fit right in and be able to play quicker. I think the Malik Willis probably projects as someone who needs more development. Uh, I think Kenny Pickett is sneaky athletic. Uh, it's hard for me to get past that one play where he like fake slid, but... He can, he can run. He's an athlete. I don't think he's near the athlete, high-end athlete that Malik Willis is. Uh, I think probably whatever, again, and I don't pretend to know the details, y'all. Something happened at Auburn. We're going to transfer. I don't think the transfer thing is that big of a deal anymore for Malik Willis. Uh, but the level of competition at Liberty is certainly not the same. Not that the ACC is like great football either. Uh, I don't have a lot of great concrete ideas about why you know he passed on it. I the other part of it that I would probably say is, you know, did the Steelers, maybe Malik Willis didn't fall. You know, I think some people, obviously people were telling him he was going to get drafted high. He was at the draft. But maybe he was always a third, second, third round type guy. Maybe the Steelers just reached for Kenny Pickett. So a way to just kind of flip that question to a certain degree instead of why he fell why did Kenny Pickett surge? And I think that there are some things that fit as far as, you know, the Steelers, what I perceive the Steelers to be someone who, you know, looks for stability. It's a great story. I don't know. I think that that's why you would draft someone, but it is a great story to play your college ball in the same stadium. Those types of things, you see the development. There's some sort of like familiarity bias because, you know, you probably have a relationship uh, with Pickett and all those types of things. But I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, and I, I certainly don't know everybody in the industry, and I certainly don't have a whole bunch of conversations like this, but I don't know a whole lot of people that would say, that would look at the film and say, I think Kenny Pickett is going to be a lot better than Malik Willis will be, potentially. I just, I think, you know, you're just making stuff up if you say that. Now, it doesn't mean that he won't be great, and it doesn't mean that Malik Willis won't fall off and be a terrible pick. You know, so many different factors come into play there, but... Just as far as the pure projection, I'm not sure how you do that. Coach Greenfield, JT, love the content. Which concept do you think would not to make a good X's and O's video? Why? Oh, man. I think I've already done many of them. <laughs> uh, things like spacing, Hank. Uh, really just like the old school dinosaur concepts that people still kind of run because of uh, what I would consider a lack of innovation or a lack of being able to mold and piece together certain things. Uh, I also think like random run videos. I got, I actually had like a weird thought that I was going to do like just a split flow inside zone video <laughs> just to see the reaction. Or I was actually playing with the idea of like doing a power video for April Fool's. But uh no, I know. I try with the X's and O's videos. I'll be honest with y'all. Uh, I try to just do ones that I like. Like, I mean, like all these videos. No, no secret sauce here about exactly, you know, what uh, I try to do here. I can do whatever the hell I want to do content-wise here. So it's more fun for me to talk about the X's and O's concepts that I either 
anecdotally have experienced playing or coaching or kind of I've always been fans of from afar. And so anything that I'm not a fan of, like I don't love, you know, even though my man McAvee probably loves it or Coach Mackey, uh, you know, I'm not going to do like a, a video on all hitches <laughs> or, uh, you know, throwing curls or things like that that I just philosophically don't believe in. And so those are probably the main ones. Michael, my man. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, you never know. Trubisky might be the answer. And, and I, I mean, are there a lot of people that don't think Trubisky is better than Pickett? Like, are there people? I, I, I'm asking. I've never thought about it in significant depth. But I don't think Kenny Pickett is head and shoulders above Trubisky. I, I mean, I don't. I think Trubisky uh, probably didn't play his best ball in Chicago. But if you unpack what the hell that Chicago situation was and is, or was, I should say, you know, I'm not going to put it all at the feet of Trubisky by any means. And so, you know, I'm, am I more excited to see Mitchell Trubisky or Kenny Pickett in Pittsburgh? I'm more excited to see Trubisky, at least initially, but, you know, maybe not. Desmond, you're coming into the chat late. You can go back and watch my thoughts on Matt Corral if you're so interested. <laughs> my man Peanut with the hot takes, bringing back Danny Marino. Love it. Joseph Kavanaugh, do you think the Bears did enough to build around fields this draft? Hell no. No. <laughs> Coach Smeta Gaming, that pin and pull video was gold. Uh, watching you geek out over your own team execute that run game. Now I can't stop searching for videos on defending it. Good luck defending it. <laughs> uh, there are ways to defend it. I'm not going to give them away. That's for sure. But... Uh, I think I mentioned actually a few ways to defend it. I had fun with that. It's those types of things are good examples. Are good examples for me are we, this channel is guilty of it as probably anybody, uh, of maybe making things more difficult than necessarily they are scheme wise. And I think that there is this kind of veil of that, even for many coaches, uh, whether it's like the clinic world or just kind of the, you know, hey, we're at this level, we must be doing some super secret ball. They're not. You know, I try to kind of pull those ideas apart or myths apart and break them down. And I think, you know, being able to execute damn near any of this stuff at the high school level uh, is certainly possible. Now, you can't, certainly probably can't do the amount of volume that maybe they do of, of different types of concepts at the highest level or higher levels. But the actual execution technique of most of it is very doable at any level within reason. Boom. What else we got here questions wise? See how long we've been going here. We got 135 of our closest friends. I appreciate y'all. Uh, hit that like button for me. Uh, it helps with these streams. I enjoy doing the streams. I really do because they kind of can go off in any different direction. And it's fun for me to just kind of do my own mental check-in as far as you know where the channel's heading, what I'm talking about. Make sure I'm hitting things, making videos that y'all are interested in. <laughs> I can tell some people are coming in hot. My man, Kaslin, boom. Oh, that's what I need to do, actually. put my Bring my graphics back. Appreciate the support. Sam Howell is my favorite quarterback drafted, I think. He was severely underrated, and I think Washington has a fantastic quarterback on their hands. Yeah, I mean, I make no bones about it on this channel. I'm a fan of Sam Howell. Uh, I like how he played the position. I think his uh, body of work, the production over the course of his career, uh, is impressive or as impressive as damn near anybody in this draft. I think he was in a tough spot. I think UNC, uh, people thought maybe they were going to be better than they were. He certainly lost a significant amount of talent around him that last year. Uh, I think he fell into some kind of valleys of hero ball that just didn't work out. And that offense is just a, is not my favorite offense as far as whatever they had to be last year, at least. Now, the years before that, I think they were so much fun. He's got a great deep ball. He's got, certainly got the ability to be able to do that. Uh, again, you know, where he's at, and I touched on this a little bit earlier in the live, but where he's at is kind of 
has got a little bit of a blessing and a curse for me. You know, I don't think anybody would necessarily say, hey, uh, model yourself exactly how the perception, and I don't know Carson Wentz personally, but the perception of what Carson Wentz is and what, you know, how he handles it might not be what everyone would want to model. I'm sure that there are certainly things he can learn from him and things, you know, just as importantly, things you don't want him to do that you can learn from people who are playing. But I think that there's a great opportunity for Sam Howell to play and maybe play quicker than some other guys who got drafted. And so will it work out over there? I'm excited to see. I think he's got a game that can potentially really translate uh, to Sundays just with his ability to drive the ball down the field and be accurate, like those types of things. The other part that I thought was interesting, and I don't know the backstory. Maybe there are. Maybe people on the chat know better than I do. But to go to school at UNC and then to have Carolina pass on you is just weird. It's, it's just weird. It comes off as strange to me. Now, maybe they just loved Matt Corral more than Sam Howell, and they loved both of them. I don't know. But to me, that struck me as odd. You know, I would have thought that late in the draft. When did? Matt, at pick 86 versus pick 144, Matt Corral to the Carolina Panthers versus a guy who's been in your own backyard for a long time. The other part about the Sam Howell thing is, you know, I was a guy who got drafted in the sixth round, uh, pick 186. Uh, I was a senior. If I was a guy who was an underclassman and I got drafted in the fifth round, I mean, I would be pissed. Really. It, I mean, I would be pissed regardless if I got drafted. You know, you're obviously happy you get drafted. But you, when you get drafted that late, there are guys that are getting drafted in front of you. Like, for instance, Bailey Zappi. Now, would Bailey Zappi have ever beaten out Sam Howell at UNC? I would probably say no. You know, would, would Malik Willis have beaten out Sam Howell at UNC? Probably not. So when guys are getting drafted ahead of you that you think you could have beaten out in college, I can imagine it's difficult. Uh, there are certainly guys who got drafted in front of me that I thought I for sure was better than. I knew I, I thought I was better than. I'd seen them throw. We'd been at the combine. We'd you know, you can kind of do that kind of a, you know, self-evaluation, but they're getting drafted ahead of me. And so it, it does kind of, you know, make you turn sideways a little bit. And just when Carolina picked Matt Corral over Sam Howell, I was like, man, you know, what am I missing? Those types of things. All right. I think we're dang near at a wrap here for this post draft thing. If there are other things that I haven't talked about, uh, I'm excited to kind of uh, see what comes up. I know just ones that are in the pipeline for sure for me. Uh, Bryce Young, CJ Stroud, uh, the dude from Kentucky. I can't think of his name right now. Uh, I'm sure that there are other guys that potentially will be uh, you know, draft eligible next year that I want to take a peek at before we get to the fall. Certainly get into some X's and O's. Going to potentially have some old school archive uh, of some really good players that uh, maybe get back and look at some of their old film to just kind of see the development that they've gone across because I catch my say, myself saying, you know, if you get an opportunity to develop and learn and all those types of things and really look, what does that look like? You know, what does raw-ish college film look like and what does more polished Sunday pro ball look like? And I think that there will be some startling differences when we uh, get a chance to pull it all apart. So I appreciate y'all hanging to the end. Uh, not hanging to the end, hanging until right now. So, oh yeah, the Stanford dude, Tanner McKee. That's another guy. So there'll be lots of good ones next year. Excited to see it. Uh, thanks for hanging on this one. If there are videos you want to see, uh, come at me in the comments. Come at me over at Twitter. A uh, bunch of ways to get a hold of me. So thanks so much for hanging out. I will see you next time. Have a good one. Here you go, Coach Grace. <laughs>